CNN has learned officials at the Justice Department were made aware of the whistleblower's allegations more than a week before the formal complaint was filed, and that Attorney General Bill Barr was notified that his name was mentioned on the phone call between President Trump and Ukraine's leader. Joining us now is 2020 presidential candidate and Democratic Senator Amy Klobuchar. She serves on the Senate Judiciary Committee. Senator, great to have you here. Thanks, in Allison. Let's just start with what your impressions were, what your conclusions were after you read the whistleblower complaint and the, the rough transcript of the phone call. Well, my first impression was that this is part of a pattern that we've seen with this president, uh, where from the very beginning, uh, when he stood in front of that sacred wall of the stars commemorating the deaths of anonymous CIA agents and gave a partisan speech, that we have seen that he has no limit, uh, whether it is believing Vladimir Putin over his own intelligence directors or what we've learned now uh, with this smoking gun of a uh, summary of a call with a foreign leader, Ukraine, a place that I actually visited with John McCain, um, saw that fledgling democracy, how much they depend on the strength of America standing with them. And so now you have uh, the president of the United States basically uh, threatening uh, this foreign leader, saying, hey, uh, freezing the aid, and then saying, I need a favor. And in the context of that same conversation, bringing up, digging up political dirt on one of his opponents. You go back to Watergate, Allison, it's just a newfangled version of that. That was a president involved in a break-in to get dirt for a campaign, and then there was a cover-up. What do we have here? Uh, worse, a president using the levers of national security to get dirt on an opponent from a foreign power that is dependent on us, and then there's a cover-up in terms of where they put the information. So are you saying the president broke the law? I'm saying that we must have impeachment investigations. I believe that this kind of conduct uh, does rise to that level. But like any good juror in the case, I'm over in the Senate, we have to look at all the evidence. But I've been calling for impeachment for months. But, I mean, when you just look at the law, let me just read a portion of it. It shall be unlawful for a foreign national directly or through any other person to make a contribution of money or other thing of value to promise expressly or implied to make any such contribution for any person to solicit, accept, or receive any such contribution from a foreign national is illegal. I mean, what more? You've seen yeah. the transcript of the phone call. No, no, what I agree. more do you need to know? No, no, no. I, I have been the one that wants these impeachment proceedings. I think that this is conduct that rises to that level. But the point is, we have to bring, the House has to come up with the evidence, and we want to have it be thorough. And you can bet you, Allison, there are people out there that worked in the White House or work in the White House now that know about this. We already know it from the whistleblower complaint that they know about this. And that's the kind of evidence they're going to need to really make that strong case because um, the, our Senate colleagues, our Republican colleagues, are the ones that are going to be key here. And I think they have to put their country in front of partisanship. Behind the scenes, are you hearing anything from your Republican colleagues in the Senate of any sort of discomfort with all of this? Um, yes. I mean, anyone that allegedly cares about national security has to care about this. What are they uh, you've saying got a you? we have long stood with our allies against Russia. And the fact that that he has crossed that line so many times, I'm shocked that they haven't come out earlier. You had you had publicly um, Senator Romney, of course, coming out, voicing concerns There's a handful about publicly. But, I mean, are you saying behind the scenes... And you have governors that won't be involved in this True, in but, Massachusetts and Vermont. But are they being more explicit with you behind the scenes? Uh, the people seem very concerned about this. I will leave it at that. And I think all of this will depend on the case that comes over from the House. And then if Mitch McConnell decides to give it the thorough hearing that it should have, and then where people are on this. Because... To me, this is pretty clear cut. That's why I've called for impeachment months before. I want to ask you about Attorney General Bill Barr's role. He's mentioned four times on the phone call. I'll just read a little portion of what the president said to the Ukrainian president. He says, Mr. Giuliani is a highly respected man. He was the mayor of New York City, a great mayor. And I would like him to call you. I will ask him to call you along with the attorney general, meaning Bill Barr. Um, what do you think his role is in all of this? Well, I don't know why he wouldn't have recused himself from this at all, and he should right now, uh, because of the fact that this involves him. His name is mentioned. The president is throwing it around. Um, that's what I think he should do. Uh, and I also 
believe what happened here. The whistleblower finds out this is heading to the White House, finds out it's around, and he actually makes a second complaint to the inspector general, who, by the way, says clearly that the whistleblower is credible. And so the, uh, the involvement of the attorney general, um, so the opinion that they issued, things like that, just lead me to believe that he should recuse himself from this matter. What did, did you watch um, the acting DNI, Joseph McGuire's appearance yesterday? I saw it? segments of it. We were having our own work in the Senate. Of course, you're busy as yeah. all of this is going on. But what was your impression of him? Do you think that he is an independent, uncompromised player in all of this? I think that this part of it is going to end up being just the preliminary part of it. I don't think this is going to be major, the fact that he should have turned it over right away. All of that was, of course, very key. But he has said, basically, you have it now. Launch your investigation. And I think there's some truth to that. What we have now is what I consider a smoking gun. We have a partial transcript, a summary of a conversation in which the president of the United States is basically saying to a foreign leader, go get dirt on my opponent. We have the whistleblower complaint that says there are multiple other people that know about this. That's obvious what you do. And then we have a super secret server where that complaint should not have been placed. And now we learn from news reports that multiple things have been put on that server. The obvious, and I know the House has asked them to preserve those documents, all of that has to be discovered. And it's just impossible to believe that there's not going to be more documentation of what happened here. But I believe on its own, that document is a cause for impeachment proceedings and a, a legal violation. Well, it's happening. I mean, impeachment proceedings are happening. As you know, Nancy Pelosi has said, yes, we'll move forward with this impeachment inquiry. And I understand what you're saying. Respect the process. However, if you look at the number count right now, they have enough votes in the House to impeach the president. Yes. But it gets caught up with conviction in the Senate. Do you see any movement possible in the uh, Yes, Senate? I do. Um, because our colleagues have got to see this as not just partisan politics. It is not that. Look at that letter from those seven um, uh, Congress people who are new with national security backgrounds. They said, we believe this has to move forward with impeachment because this is about our country. This is about hundreds of thousands of people who died on the battlefields protecting our democracy and other democracies. Um, this is very serious stuff. And that's why you saw those 300 security experts come out this morning, including people that had worked in the George Bush administration, one in particular that headed up national security for the Justice Department. They came out and said, we must go forward. And so I, I think, Allison, this has just begun. And once you get and start questioning other witnesses, people who used to work at the White House, my guess is you're going to see a pattern of this. It won't even just be one call. For instance, we know he called Vladimir Putin just six days later after calling the president of Ukraine. Let's get that call. President Trump was caught yesterday, I guess is the right word, on a cell phone uh, video making comments that sounded ominous about the whistleblower or people who gave the whistleblower information. Let me play that for you and our viewers. I want to know who's the person that gave the whistleblower. Who's the person that gave the whistleblower the information? Because that's close to a spy. You know what we used to do in the old days when we were smart, right? The spies and treason, right? We used to handle it a little differently than we do now. What's your reaction? Well, he's basically there threatening execution. Uh, he is talking, calling someone that works for him and the whistleblower a spy, right? And in fact, all of this makes sense to me. He has a very disturbing conversation about getting dirt one of his opponents for the 2020 election. And then, of course, someone that heard about it talks to a trusted CIA agent who is, this is the news reports, has expertise on Ukraine, and that's how he finds it. This is legitimate discussions between security people who are involved, that care about our country. So what happens then is whoever in the White House maybe didn't predict the CIA agent would do this. And again, this is just reports that he's a CIA agent. And he then files a whistleblower complaint. I don't see anything wrong with that in that they were having a discussion of concern about national but security. But do you think that the president bringing up execution has a chilling effect on whistleblowers? Oh, exactly. That's what he's trying to do. But my point is, we just have to call on the patriotism of people that used to work in that White House or work there now to come forward and tell the truth. 
And if they don't do it out of patriotism, there's always subpoenas. But I, I truly believe there's going to be more evidence that comes out that will bolster the case that will then come to the U.S. Senate. But my belief, to be clear, is that that transcript alone, that summary of the call, is enough. But to make a stronger case to the public, you want to get the corroborating evidence, which is what the House will be looking for. Senator Amy Klobuchar, great to have Thank you here you. in studio with us. Thanks Appreciate so much. It. Thank you.